And good morning, everybody, and Happy New Year. Our prelude this morning is an original song called All of That. And it's a song that invites us to reclaim all of what we are. Thank you, Leah. <clears throat> and good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you this morning. We've all sort of crossed the threshold, so to speak, into a new year, a new solar calendar, a doorway, if you will. I saw a video of uh, a friend uh, had posted on Facebook. He was in his dressing gown, I guess, and he was standing at his back door, it was open, and he was obviously trying to get somebody out the door, insisting and almost pushing them, of course, you couldn't see them. And then you realize who he was talking to was 2020. Finally, he managed to get 2020 out the back door, close the door, and then you hear a knock at the front door. He goes to the front door, he opens the door, and the invisible guest, 2021, enters. And my friend Joey was obviously enthusiastic, if not eager, to get the invisible guest into his apartment and close that door to keep him there. We do have an awful lot of hope, I think for the next year, for this year. But we have no idea yet what the challenges or the gifts will be. 
And I believe that no matter what awaits us, that our longing to see clearly, to learn and to heal both ourselves and our world will be what shapes our future. So on this first Sunday of 2021, let us begin with the wisdom of Rumi, brought to us from the 13th century and translated by Coleman Barks, the guest house. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. There you have it. We are advised to welcome whoever and whatever shows up in our lives, greeting each experience with delight and laughter seems a tall order, but there you go. Because we don't really know who we're meeting at that first encounter. Nor do we know the opportunity that each one of these experiences brings into our lives. Each experience on this journey of our lives can be seen as a gift, a gift of awareness and a gift of healing. May this light of knowledge and compassion brighten every doorway. Our opening song this morning is Sing Out Praises for the Journey. Thank you to Ruth for putting our words up on the screen. Wayside hostel built by the 
Thank you, Sybil. Wonderful story. It's true, you know, sometimes we need somebody else like a Nana or a partner, a friend, even a stranger to show us how to see the world in a different way. You know, I welcome and frankly need other people to show me into those doors of new experience and new understandings, new perspectives. That boy in the story was guided by his Nana to see who was in his community. And he may not have noticed nor even wanted to notice if his grandmother hadn't created that opportunity and encouraged him. There are many people whose lives cross our paths who we sometimes pay absolutely no attention to and have no curiosity about who they are or what their lives are like. Someone in my family was one of those people that you walk past quickly or try not to notice. She was homeless. Her, well, I'll call her Mary for today. Mary was a university graduate, a poet, a writer, and she had a mental illness. She situated herself in a community in which she felt comfortable. She gravitated to the doorways of the affluent neighborhood of South Granville Street in Vancouver, where she would curl up in her bundle of blankets and find Safeway, safety. There was a small community library where she would spend her days reading and using the public washroom and I guess feeling part of normal life. Of course, she was not normal to those who encountered her. She probably frightened people. Her hair was heavily matted. She smelt because she didn't bathe and her skin was weather hardened. Her favorite doorway at night was the doorway of a small but very exclusive art gallery. The doorway was recessed back a bit by about three feet from the sidewalk, enough to keep her out of the wind and the rain. It was well lit from the display window lights on either side that illuminated the feature paintings. And the recessed area offered some protection from unexpected attacks. I am pretty sure that the art gallery owners were perturbed by her making a nest for herself in their doorway. And I'm sure she scared them as well. So one day I got a phone call from the South Granville Business Association president. Now I would have expected her to be angry, frustrated and demanding that Mary's family take responsibility for her and get her off the street. But that wasn't how she came across. The woman who called me definitely wanted to solve a problem, but she did so, which surprised me, with caring and concern. As the poem by Rumi suggested, she was treating this unexpected and challenging guest honorably. In other words, when the world presents you with an unexpected guest or a challenging situation, we act from our values. And in her case, and probably for most of ours, it was respect and kindness 
and genuine curiosity rather than judgmentalism and entitlement. It took many years and many interventions and many offers to help that eventually got Mary the help that she needed, regular medication for her illness, stable housing, which is what we all deserve. I'll never forget her though huddled in her nest of blankets in that art gallery doorway. I think of all the people who during the daylight hours walked through that doorway with very different lives. None would have known that through the night that doorway was Mary's home. Rumi would have us keep open every doorway. And when it comes to our spiritual lives, I would agree with that. But in the physical world, there are doorways that need to be kept closed or hidden. I'm thinking of a particular doorway in Amsterdam built around 1944. The doorway was disguised as a bookcase in a storage room, but behind it were two apartments where two families lived. I was about the same age as Anne Frank when I walked through that hidden doorway as she would have done at 13 years old. Anne lived in hiding from the Nazis for 761 days until that doorway was discovered and she and her family were arrested for simply being Jewish. And because I, I touched that doorway, I touched the, the books that were in the fake bookshelf, in, I saw the dust and I, I felt the closeness of the walls. I walked the halls and the stairs and I imagined living for two years without seeing anyone else, without being able to go outside. I carry in me the reality of that time and those lives. It could have been me, could have been you. And I wonder, would I have been as brave as Anne? Would I, been, would I have been as wise? as her. And the fact is that this is not a perfect world. And human beings do terrible things to other beings out of fear or pride or revenge or the desire to hold on to power. I'm sure you can think of many examples right now of terrible things happening. And there are, there are doorways that need to be closed to keep some people safe and to keep people that do us harm out. So we need to know when we need to shut the door. We need to know when to keep it open. There are boundaries that we are sometimes compelled to make in order to shelter someone, whether that's an individual or a group of people like the Jews during the Second World War, people of color in our society today, or the poor who are everywhere. <laughs> or perhaps it is opening a door as Raoul Dubé did last June during the protests against racial injustice after the murder of Floyd George in Washington, DC. You might remember in the street in front of 
his house, Raoul watched protesters being sprayed with tear gas and being pushed back and trapped by the shields of the police. When he saw that the crowds had nowhere to escape to, he opened his door and shouted to those who were right in front of his house to come in. About 60 people filled his house and his backyard and his basement. And he gave them water and milk to wash the gas out of their eyes. And when he ran out of milk, his neighbors started to pass over bottles and jars of milk to help the protesters to stop the pain in their eyes. I find that moving, that reaching out, that opening of that door, that welcoming in of people that need refuge. We need to protect what we value a racially and culturally diverse society for one, the democratic principle, another, freedom of the press, freedom of religion. We need to know that sometimes we'll choose between opening that door or closing that door to protect our values, our principles. The next and last door that I want to speak to today is the door into our private world. The door to our inner life, the life of the spirit, the soul, the imagination. The door through which no one can follow us. Our inner world, it's rich with ideals and imaginings, hopes and dreams. It's the source of limitless creative ideas. It can be dark with fears and monsters, and it can be filled with abundant hope and endless freedom and potential. And within that inner world, there are many doorways, each leading to a piece of our psyche, some of which we are conscious of and some still hidden from our awareness. Becoming mindful of this inner world is important. It's important for our psychic and spiritual health and well-being. This month, our theme is spiritual groundedness. And we will be exploring some of the paths to deepen our social awareness and our spiritual knowledge. Social awareness and spiritual knowledge aren't oppositional. It's not one or the other. Action and contemplation work together. As we deepen in spiritual knowledge, we are moved to social awareness. As we deepen in social awareness, we are moved to spiritual knowledge. It's a both and relationship. Spirituality needs to be grounded in the reality of outer action, in what we do in the world. What we do in the world, if it isn't going to embitter, not, embitter us or uh, deplete us, we need to have a source for renewal. Knowing our spiritual roots, having a spiritual practice and a healthy relationship with your inner life will sustain the work that we will do in the world. To give us a common ground in spiritual practice, we're going to do two now. And I hope you'll consider these as a gift for beginning the new year. 
First of all, Leah is going to lead us in a chant for a few minutes. And you're welcome to join in. Remembering, of course, to keep yourselves on mute. As you sing with Leah, or hear and feel the words that she sings, let them drop inside of you. Let them move inside of you. Let them touch different places in that inner world. I encourage you to trust in the simple repetition of the chant. Breathe and be present with the words and the music. And after the chant, I will lead you in a guided meditation. Leah. Thank you, Deborah. The words of the chant are by Emily Dickinson, and they are not knowing when the dawn will come. I open every door. Not knowing when the dawn will come. Not knowing when the dawn will come. I open, open, open every door, every door, not knowing If you don't already have your eyes closed, I invite you, if you're comfortable, to close your eyes and to breathe deeply. Feel the vibrations in your body left over from that chanting. Breathe deeply. In your inner vision, in the inner world of your imagination, find yourself, locate yourself in a field Look down at your feet 
and see the ground. Look up again and see the field and begin to slowly walk into it. After your next breath, you'll discover a doorway in the middle of the field. Walk closer and look closely at this door. the shape, the color, what's it made of? Are there distinguishing features? What does the handle or the doorknob look like? On the count of four, you'll open this doorway, this door, and step across the threshold. One, two, three, four. In your mind's eye, what do you see? What do you notice? Is it light or dark? Cool or warm? Is there a smell? Walk a few steps away from the doorway into this new space. Look down to see what is the ground. Look to your right. and then look to your left. And then look forward again. What do you see? Allow there to be an object in this area that is there especially for you. See it now and go to it. Look carefully at it. And if appropriate, take it with you as you return to the door. Walk back through the doorway. Close the door. And walk back into the field towards the place where you started. Take a deep breath. 
Pay attention to the exhale. Wiggle your toes. Move your fingers gently. Becoming aware of the outside world. And gently, with soft gaze, open your eyes. Gently returning to this outer world. We are more than what we see with our physical eyes. We are more than what we know. We are more than what we imagine. How amazing that our bodies are made from the dust of stars. How extraordinary that our dreams have been absorbed from the dreams of our ancestors and live in us today. How astonishing that we are here. That we are. Please join in singing, We Are. And thank you again to Ruth for putting our words up onto the screen. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are our grandmother's prayers, and we are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We are mothers of courage and fathers of time. We are daughters of dust and the sons of great visions. We're sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are lovers of life and the builders of nations. We're seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the wisdom of ages. We are our grandmother's prayers and we are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We share in love, we listen in love, we hold one another in love. Each joy and concern we witness and learn and grow. Now that we are online, we welcome your donations and pledges in two different ways. 
First, we've set up the Unitarian Fellowship Bank account to automatically deposit e-transfers sent to info at ufon.ca. Secondly, you can still write a check and pop it in the mail. Our charity for January through March is INSPIRE, a national Indigenous registered charity that invests in the education of First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. For the long-term benefit of those individuals, for their families and for Canada. If you would like to donate to this designated charity for the month, please note that on your e-transfer or check. We are grateful for your offering. We certainly are. Our closing words are a new year blessing by John O'Donoghue. On the day when the weight deadens on your shoulders, and you stumble. May the clay dance to balance you. And when your eyes freeze behind the gray window and the ghost of loss gets into you, may a flock of colors, indigo, red, green, and azure blue come to awaken in you a meadow of delight. When the canvas frays in the curve of thought and a stain of ocean blackens beneath you, may there come across the waters a path of yellow moonlight to bring you safely home. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of light be yours. May the fluency of the ocean be yours. And may the protection of the ancestors be yours. And so may a slow wind work these words of love around you, an invisible cloak to mind your life. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, nor the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Now you're all invited to switch to gallery view and to imagine that we're all holding hands in a big circle and we'll sing our closing song, Carry the Flame of Peace and Love until we meet again. Then we shall see a world of light and a world of joy. Carry the